Welcome to the Dr. Joe Show. I'm the Doc, and this is our second episode of Cigar Collectibles. Uh, last episode, we finished off with the P1 jar from CigarOne.com, got it into our little display case, got it all set up, and uh, this time around, we're doing Romeo and Juliet Short Churchill jar. Uh, this jar is available on several Habanos websites. I chose to order it from CigarsOfCuba.com. And uh, for a few reasons. A, I was happy with what I got from them as far as the metal they are in the fours were concerned. And B, with the discrepancies on the number fours in episode five of Faker Fine, I want to assure everybody that they are 100% genuine and that, albeit the hologram issue is strange, they are real. And I put my trust in the site to order this jar from them. Uh, these Romeo Shore Churchills look absolutely wonderful. And let me tell you something, when you order a jar, if your site is not trustworthy, that's a perfect opportunity for them to screw you. Because you don't get a box with the cigars, you have nothing to look at but the cigars themselves and the band. So we know that this site is on the money. These cigars look fantastic. They've come in a vacuum sealed bag, much like the cigars come from Cigar One. I like this method of shipping, but it means it requires a good five days to a week of humidity before smoking because trust me all the air is sucked out of these they need time to replenish their oils and get to a good smoking uh, humidity so why did I choose the Romeo and Juliet jar? well several reasons one the websites I've seen it on it looks interesting enough but and I know it, it's going to be great but they don't take good pictures they don't show you what the jar really looks from every angle you know, they give you one or two shots that are this fucking big, oops, and uh, it sucks. If you go to drjoeshow.com, uh, a true review site, and uh, it's becoming a review site, there's, there, there are very good reasons to go there. Number one, all of our videos are listed there. Number two, our reviews, most of them, contain, contain exceptional pictures. Uh, I have a lot of experience with photography. Uh, like many of you know, I also run built knifemakersdatabase.com from the ground up and did all the knife photography on there for over six years. So I've become very good with the digital camera and can take some stellar photos. Uh, a lot of people want to know what they're buying before they get into it. If you want to look at this collection, look at the jars in the collection, choose which ones you want, don't want, really want to know what they look like, go to my site. Check it out. The P1 jar should be up on the site by next week. Uh, in the meantime, we have reviews on the Metal Dior's coming up, reviews on the Gloriosos coming up, pictures of both. Uh, lots of stuff to look at. Keep going back to the site. Keep visiting. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Uh, my best friend, Mike, is working with me now, and he's putting up reviews on both Cuban and non-Cuban brands. He's doing a lot of work on the non-Cuban end. And... Um, he has some great descriptions for you to read uh, on certain cigars you may want to try. Uh, and that's about it. Third reason, our cabinet, this jar is going to go great in it with the reds. I know it. Uh, most jars have some red in it, but we want everything to match up nice in this cabinet. Obviously, our cabinet, you'll see it in a minute if you haven't seen episode one, can only hold four jars nicely. You want one jar shelf. Um... We have another cabinet uh, downstairs. I have an old oak cabinet with wider shelves, which would look nice with two and two, 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 three shelves of two. And uh, it's oak and glass, antique, varnished, in great condition. It's been in the basement for God knows how long and covered in dust, but I'm cleaning it up. And that's going to be our second case once we run out of room in here. We only have room for four jars in the first case. So, and there are a lot more jars than four, trust me. Um, I know maybe a 10. There are a lot uh, of modern jars. We're not even talking about the antique ones, the old ones, which I haven't even gotten into yet as well. Trust me, if you keep watching these episodes, you're going to be really pleased with the results of A, the knowledge you're given, and B, all the different things you see that you learn about that you didn't know existed or did know but wanted to know more about. We're going to get in-depth on a lot of different things. These episodes are going to keep coming. Fake or Fine is going to keep coming. And Cigar Collectibles has just started. I really want to make this a great series because I love, the only thing I love 
well, not more than, but the only thing I love almost as much as smoking cigars is collecting them. So, finally, as you may realize, it's that time of month. Yes, yes, uh, Valentine's Day has passed, but my chocolates have not. I still have some. And I think a chocolate and a Romeo, who knows, maybe they'll go good together. Maybe not. Either way, it's Valentine's Day, and what cigar smoker wouldn't want a beautiful batch of Romeo and Juliet to go with that special February day? And uh, you may see on all the websites, if you're a member of any of these uh, Habanos websites, every Valentine's Day, my mailbox gets flooded with Valentine's Day, Romeo and Juliet special, blah, blah, blah. It's fucking ridiculous. Like, everybody thinks the same thing. Valentine's Day, Romeo and Juliet. Of course, well, what are you going to do? Valentine's Day, Central Panza? <laughs> Come on. doesn't work. All right? Anyway, with no further ado, we're going to get into the episode. We're going to get these into humidity. If I didn't have the jar with me, I'd put these in Boveda bags. But you know what? The jar is here. So let's get to that box, open it up, and start to set it up. Okay, so here we are with our package. Boop, boop. Once again, a big box from Cigars of Cuba. Uh, let's give it a cut, open it up, and see what we get. To tell you the truth, this jar has been here for about a week now, but I just haven't gotten around to the episode. So that's how real I am about doing these episodes. When I say you're not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna do, you're gonna, you're gonna see what I see. Okay, I'm not gonna open a box and go through it. We're doing this together, so my job got here a week ago, and I waited all this time, like a fucking kid at Christmas dying to open his presents, just to have a moment off of work to do this video. So, please, enjoy it. <laughs> anyway, let's see what we got here. Open it up. Oh, almighty. Once again, I proved to be the worst in the world at opening boxes. I guess I'm too excited about it. Uh, and I will turn it over this way so you can see what's going on. Ah, oh, of course, first of all, we have pellets. Don't you don't you just love these fucking things? I God almighty, I'm so sick of these. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get these pellets out of the way and look at that. Remember the P1 jar? Cigar1.com, how the box came, wasn't wrapped up like this. That's kind of nice. I like that. So even if you know who opens this box, they got to go through opening the paper and blah, blah, blah. But either way, you know what? If they did open this box, there's no cigars in it. The cigars are over there. Uh, so they wouldn't really get crap. I mean, they could say, oh, it's from Cuba. But it's not from Cuba. It's from Spain. Uh, it's from Spain, so... They have no right to take it. No right. So this wrapping isn't even necessary, really, except to protect the outer level of the box. Um, which, last time on Cigar 1, remember the little thing I had? An issue that some warehouse douche took a razor blade, and when cutting off the Habanos number, he sliced right into my $500 P1 box. So, now if I ever want to sell it, or even if I just wanted to keep it for display, it has a big gash in it. Uh, people just don't think. They don't think, or they do, and they just don't give a shit. You know what? I do give a shit. I really do. And I'm sick of people who don't. But that's another story. Maybe, some, maybe one I'll tell when doing a cigar review. You'll see in a cigar review coming up, a first review where I did a P1, no, I did a La Gloria number 4. I go into these little rants, these little tirades, and um, you may or may not enjoy them. <laughs> Just fair warning. So, here's our package. And it's wrapped up very nicely. I decided this time to get those pellets out of the way because they were really annoying last time. I'll open this as Oh, yeah. Come on now. 
Fuck that. Uh -oh. Nicely. Do you see what I see? Oh, I love adding things to the collection. Look at that. Oh. oh, look at that. That is just so cool. Wow. 25 Unidads, factory size for sure, Churchill, if you were wondering. You know, this is what you don't get to see. That's all printed on. Nice. <clears throat> wow. Unfortunately, it's only in Spanish. La Marca Romeo y Julieta fue created. Okay, Romeo y Julieta was created in Cuba in 1875. Sir Winston Churchill, uh, smoked, devoted. He okay. This was his favorite cigar. He smoked a lot of these cigars. That's to do. He visited Havana in 1946. Uh, converted in Alaska. Something about the Churchill, uh, Romeo and Juliet Churchill, obviously. Maybe the year that he went over there and told us that I converted. Maybe he, the name was then applied to it as Churchill. The short Churchill is 124 millimeters uh, by 50 gauge. And uh, savor aroma similar to the Churchill's. Well, whatever it says, I got most of it. But this is why I love doing this because you know what? You are not going to get to see this on some other website uh, when they're where they're selling this. All you're going to see is a picture of the jar, and that's about it. Wow. So here we are. We got our box out, and uh, I think we're going to go get ready and open it.